Uh, morning, ladies and gents. Uh, Simon Brown here uh, for our first market standard. Quick, uh, before I dive into today's uh, webcast, what we're looking to do here, uh, SPG Securities Online Share Trading. Um, the plan is to ultimately have a webcast every weekday, 10.30 Initially, we're kicking off with uh, navigating uh, the various different websites, be that Web Trader, Online Share Trading, Auto Share Invest, uh, Iris Viewpoint, that would be Wednesdays, Fridays, ETFs, uh, Mondays. Uh, Denaria and myself will do a review of the market from the week past, uh, research that's coming out, data that's coming in the week heading, the like. Um, and then we will fill it out with the Tuesdays and Thursdays, maybe something around fundamentals, technicals, etc. All of them are being recorded. Uh, you will get the invite to everyone. Uh, and if you can't make it, we will record and we will drop it onto the YouTube channel as well as the community forum at uh, Standard Bank, as well as the online share trading. Uh, you'll be able to download under announcements. Today, we're going to be looking at the Standard Online Share Trading platform and in particular, how to find a share or an ETF. Uh, in truth, it's simple, but there's a lot of ways of doing it, and particularly for newbies, some are, are, are finding it a little more complicated than others. Let me just ramp that up, and let me see. I'm going to zoom a bit. Um, so this is your login page. The easiest way to find a share is if you know the three-letter alpha code that the JSC uses, and uh, quite simply, you pop that up into the top up there. Uh, note the drop down. You've got uh, warrants, uh, futures indices, CFDs, uh, and you've also got commodity, single stock futures, and options. But we're looking shares, we're looking ETFs. We'll touch on the others in a later day. And if you know the code, SPK, Standard Bank. And if you don't, you will get it in time as you as you use it more and more. And you simply hit the quote button, and there is the Standard Bank share page. Now. This is the page you're trying to get to when you want to know more about a particular stock. Everything you need uh, for, for a particular share is on this page. Uh, if I run down on the left initially, it tells you the indices it's in, uh, the different warrants, single stock futures, CFDs, options that are available on it. Uh, just below that, what we've got is the uh, trade activity for today and then for the previous trading day in terms of volume value highs and lows percentage move uh, rand and cent move and last price or for the previous day of course closing price a uh, little below that some more statistics coming through uh, 12 month highs and lows with their dates market capitalization that is share price times number of shares you can see the number of shares in the case of standard bank just over 1.6 billion uh, and what we've also got a little further down from that is the indexes and that it exists in and the average numbers on those various different indices as well, telling you what the dividend yields are, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and, and what you'll notice, what it's telling you is what's the dividend yield or price earnings of Standard Bank, but then also for those different indices it sits in. Uh, below is the Profile Media Consensus forecast. Currently, it's a buy as well as expectations going forward. I'm gonna, in one of the other sessions, I'll delve very deeply into the profile media uh, forecasts and the like. For now, more looking at how to get to this page. Uh, up at the top here, uh, the information tools and links, top right, price history news, research reports, uh, results summaries, forecasts, dividends, uh, charts, uh, company profile, directors, directors dealings and activities. Again, we'll spend an entire session on that in point. Uh, we've got the price graph. This is just a simple one. This is showing us uh, the intraday chart for today, uh, which is Wednesday, 25 March, uh, up 8.3% so far today. You can also get a monthly chart. Uh, you can click to three months. You can click to six months. You'll note it tells you the move over the period, uh, one year chart. Most of those numbers looking fairly bleak, three years, uh, the five years, and then a 10 year chart at the same time. Uh, we've then got the buyers and sellers, buyers on the left-hand side, sellers on the right-hand side, what price are they looking to buy and sell at, what volume, and then the previous 30 trades that have gone through for Standard Bank, which you will note for a large company like Standard Bank, the previous 30 trades takes, well, a minute and some change uh, for you know some of the smaller, less liquid stocks that uh, previous 30 trades might be a day. In, in some cases, it might even be weeks or there's some very illiquid shares that trade infrequently where, frankly, it might even be, I don't know, months, you know, last year or something like that to get back to the last 30 trades. So if you know the share code, 
that's nice and simple. You drop it in, you say, right, SPK, I know the code, really cool. But what about if you don't know the code and you're thinking, well, I want to buy Standard Bank or I want to do some investigation into Standard Bank, but I'm not quite sure uh, what the story is and I need to know more information around it. Um, how do we potentially find that? Um, and that does get a little more uh, complex, but there's a, a couple of different routes and I'm going to show them all to you because they're important and they help us. And the key one, what I'm using, tools on the menu, company info, uh, and then you simply go down to find by company. And your find by company then shows you, essentially it gives you a, a, an A to Z. And every so often my internet goes a little bit slow. This is the joys of, of, of real time. Ah, it's not slow internet, it's a zoomed page. My bad. Sorry, internet. Um, and you've got, well, in fact, there's one from Foresight. So you've got the new one. And you've got your A to Z. You know it's Standard Bank. You click on S, um, and there comes up all the different listed companies that start with S, starting with Sabvest, uh, ending with uh, Signia, uh, and there is Standard Bank. Now, important point in Standard Bank, you'll notice that there are three different codes after Standard Bank name. One is Standard Bank. The other two are then the Standard Bank uh, preference shares, the SBKP and the SBPP. We'll come to preference shares in a bit. But that will tell you about the code for Standard Bank. And that SBK code is the code that you would look to drop in the top up there if you're looking to get that to that quote page, as it's called. What we can also just simply do uh, is we click on Standard Bank. And then what happens is we end up at what we call uh, the company page. And this tells you all about the Standard Bank Group, uh, you know, some simple stuff. You know, for example, their website and, you know, who are the big shareholders, uh, when is the AGM, recent results coming through. And if you looked on the right-hand side here, you'll see another menu running down there. For example, we can go and see who are the major shareholders. It's the uh, ICBC out of China, just owning over 21%, and then government employees pension fund owning uh, just under 12.5%. So that takes you through to, to the page, and I'll show you how to get back to that. Skip back. To get to this page, let me step back to that. So from that quote, from that quote screen, you can get back to the, the, the company profile page. And I'm going to spend a fair bit of time on in, in different webcasts as we go through. We will be looking at that company uh, profile page, the quote page, because there's a huge amount of information. So what we did on that way to find the share was quite simply, we went via com uh, tools, company info, and we went by find by company. We can also go find by sector. Now, sectors are not or perhaps as intuitive as we think they would be. You know, you might think a company belongs in a certain sector, but this is the JC sectors, and they're fairly rigidly done and therefore don't always pop up as expected. The easy one, of course, is that, you know, you click on banks, so you're interested in, in a, in a JSE-listed bank, uh, and there they are. We've got ABSA, Capitec, Finbon, First Rand, NetBank, RMB Holdings, and uh, Standard Bank. And again, there's your Standard Bank popping up. So now we've hit uh, uh, three different ways where we can find a particular share uh, via the code, an alphabetical list, or the sector. There's another way to do it as well, and a couple more ways, but the one I'm going to look at here is how to find it via a particular index. Now, we have indexes which are collective collections of shares, be that, for example, the top 40 index, which is the 40 biggest stocks in our market. We've also got the Finney 15, which is the 15 biggest financial stocks. Standard Bank would sit in both, but maybe in particular you're looking for maybe you want a, a mid cap. So you come to the page, which is a list of indices. Now, this page in of itself is an important page. Um, what we have here is obviously the latest moves from the various different indices. Uh, we've also got the dividend and price earnings for each of the different indices, as well as we can get historical data uh, chart and add it to our watch list. So there's a fair bit that we can do from this already. But if we look at that second column on the left there, index shares. So you're particularly looking for a certain stock. And in this case, maybe you're looking for a mid cap. And you click on that, and what it will do, it will bring you a list of all the shares that sit within the mid-cap index. Um, now, maybe rather than mid-cap index, you're saying, you know what, the, uh, resources. You're interested in perhaps a resource stock. So you click on the link there to the resi, and this shows you the 10 biggest resources. Now, this is not all of the resource stocks on our market. This index is the resi 10. 
So it includes the 10 biggest resource stocks on our market. This list gets reconstituted uh, every quarter, uh, March, June, September, and December. The stocks within it get changed. In other words, if you were number 10 at the end of March and come end of June, you're now number 12, well, they kick you out and they go and they bring in the new number 10. So the index is changing at that bottom level. You know, the big guys, uh, BHP Billiton, Anglo-American and the like, they, they're in there a fair bunch. They're also, for example, you'll see Mondi and you'll think to yourself, Mondi? Again, it's using the JC FTSE uh, classification. Mondi is paper, paper is a commodity, so therefore Mondi is considered a resource stock. Uh, and, and folks will oftentimes argue about this. To my mind, it's quite fairly simple. Um, this is the process that is being used by the JSC. We run with it absolutely. Um, another way of, of finding a share is if you already own it, which is perhaps a bit counterintuitive, but if you already own the share and you've got a portfolio, and here is my tax-free portfolio down at the bottom, um, your share code is going to be represented in the portfolio. So you can go directly and click on a share code and you'll come through to this page here and you will find the, the 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 detail again we're back at the what we call the quote page at all points in these you could have elected to trade instead so you do you know that you know you, you you own some you want to either buy more or perhaps you want to be a seller or something as the case may be uh two options you'll notice under tools the first button under tools is a trade button you click on that and now you're at the trade screen uh, and I've seen a couple of folks asking around that. I'll come back to my trade screen in a moment. You'll notice also up at the top here with my quick find, I've been clicking the quote button. I could also go and click the trade button. Uh, last two things I want to quickly peek at, then we'll come back to this trade screen. Um, what's important is also ETFs and other sort of products. So under uh, instruments, you can go and click on shares, <clears throat> and then you can start to type a name. Uh, and I type Stan, and I say list all, um, <clears throat> and it brings up the three with Stan in the name, which is Standard Bank, Standard Bank Preference, and Standard Bank Preference. And there's your options again under tools and your different actions for it. So you can find them this way. So you know a company, you know Sassel. You know how to spell Sassel, you know Sassel. You say list all, and there's the two Sassels. One is the Sassel share, and one is the Sassel BEE share that sits there so you can come in here and just simply type it in and we found that under tools and shares so another fairly simple way for exchange traded funds we've got the list here so this is all of the exchange traded funds uh, some of them will not be available in a tax-free investment account this is the entire list remember you can also go to the issuer websites there's in fact a right there nice and simple for you the one invest website and you click through there and you'll find out details around the different one invest uh, etfs that are available one of them for example is rhodium we click through we can now see what's happening in, in the rhodium again we are back to that quote page in, in many senses there's many different ways of finding ourselves at this quote page and that that's what we're going through so that was a nice simple way where we just went instruments exchange traded funds there's also then exchange traded notes quick let me explain difference exchange traded fund it's a passive index or commodity or currency although typically not currency it's a tracker and the manager of that fund be it one invest they physically hold it in the case of an exchange traded note it is essentially a credit note so they're promising you the return but they don't necessarily hold that particular commodity and sometimes it's just practical if we look at uh, the sba oil which is the standard bank uh, oil etn it's just not practical to store vast quantities of oil so you know, they'll be managing that in a sense in terms of saying, well, you know, using futures and other derivative products to ensure that you get the vanilla price. You're not going to get the futures price. You're going to get the vanilla price in the process. And we're back. Yes, audio died there for a moment. Also under instruments, you can go and find preference shares. Now, preference shares are shares that are issued or, or debt instruments that are issued by listed companies. Um, they will pay uh, interest that is uh, related in terms of, of uh, linked to the prime price rather. Um, and there's your list of all the different preference shares. We'll delve into those in a separate one. And then, of course, the tax-free enabled instruments. As I said, 
No ETNs available in a tax-free account, no individual shares available, um, but there are a whole bunch plus 70 different ETFs that are available, and that's that list. So if you're looking particularly you want to buy for your tax-free account, you can start here. And then the last way is our different filters. And again, you can filter on, on, on uh, shares, warrants, installments. The share filter is a very, very powerful tool. Um, it enables you to start searching and to say, what am I looking for? So you can search and let's have a look. Let's say, right, show me all the shares that have a, sorry, dividend yield greater than 5%. Uh, let's add a second search. Let's also say, I want a market capitalization. In other words, I want them to be large of greater than 10 billion. You'll notice I'm missing six zeros there because market capitalization is in million rands. Um, and I then say, so I'm, this is just going to return me a list of all the shares with a dividend yield greater than 5% and a market capitalization greater than 10 billion. You hit the search button and it then brings you back. And in this case, we've got 42 different industries. Uh, we can search by different columns. We can also say, look, which column don't we want? Um, Security, sorry, industry, no, don't want industry, uh, don't want sector, um, sorry, sector brought it back. Uh, what do we want? Yep, that's cool. So now we've got ourselves a list of 42 different stocks that have got a dividend yield greater than five and a market capital greater than 5% and a market capitalization greater than 10 billion rand. So if you're looking for particular certain types, and you might have said, well, actually, I want uh, to find small caps. So maybe you would have said, I want them to be smaller than 1 billion. I'm looking at exactly the same uh, dividend yield, but show me smaller than 1 billion. And here we have 87. Now, yeah, of course, there's a lot of if, buts, and maybes in this space. There's, you know, particularly in the current uh, 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 COVID times, you know, this is just giving you a snapshot. This isn't saying rush off and buy. It's saying, hey, these are the ones that fit your search requirement. You dropped a search requirement in. Here they are. Now you can start to find them and get some more sense about them. Folks, if you've got questions, drop them into the Q&A. Um, uh, EJ, the answer is no. So when the list here excludes uh, ETFs. Um, and uh, so what, what it does is it, is it, is it includes them. They, they're there. So there's the core shares SA prop tracker. But what we want is to be able to search only on ETFs. And at this point in the search functionality, no. Um, what we have to do for that part of the process, unfortunately, is go to the instruments, the exchange traded funds. Uh, so let me go to the trade screen. And I can't buy it in this account because it's a tax-free account. So let me move to an account where I can buy Standard Bank, a normal equity account. And what we got here is that trade screen. And there's a there's a fair bunch of data here. Make no mistake about that. Let me zoom in a bit. There we go. Confirm it's Standard Bank you're looking at. Uh, on the left-hand side, we've got the current buyers and sellers. Buyers on the left, sellers on the right and the quantity that they wish to buy. And that, uh, I'm a stress. That is the entire JSC order book. That is not just Standard Bank clients. Standard Bank takes their client orders, sends them to the JSC. The JSC has a central order book and then distributes it out. You can also see the last 10 trades done at the bottom here, but this block up at the top right is what really matters. Are you wanting to buy or sell? First question. I assume you know what you want to do. I'm going to say, please buy me, and I'm going to want to buy 100 Standard Bank shares. So I put the qu uh, quantity in. If I owned, it would tell me how many shares are my current position, and I can sell up to 100% of my current position. I own none. I can't therefore sell. I'm only buying. Then we have two options in terms of price, at market or limit. And there's an important distinction. At market, we'll send your order in and buy at the best sell price that is currently in the market. Limit says, I want to buy, but I don't want to pay more than 99 Rand and 85 cents for my Standard Bank shares, which means that the market will go, the order will go to market, but it'll come up on the buy side at 99 Rand and 85. And until it either expires or gets traded or gets canceled by myself, that order will sit there. And if no one wants to sell at 9985, I don't get the shares. You know, I've put a cheeky bid in here at a little over 6% below the current price, 
and it simply might not happen. Um, what you then have to specify is how long is this order good for? And basically, it's good for day. In other words, what hasn't traded by close of business today will be canceled. And if nothing is traded, it will be canceled or good for month. Month is 30 days and you are noted 28 April. That's because there's some public holidays between now and then. And good for month is the same story. That order will stay there until either I receive my allocation of 100 shares or I cancel it or close the business on the 28th of April, in which case then we will catch it and then it will automatically get canceled. What we've got just below that is then the prices that you will be paying. So projected share price, uh, the security transfer tax, the straight, the brokerage, the VAT, which is charged on straight and brokerage, your investor protection levy, the overall projected cost, in this case, just over 10,000 Rand for those 100 shares, the available amount in your account. I've got 35, just under 36,000 there. So how much money would be left over? If I went and said, buy me, please, 400 shares, You'll note this numbers all update in real time, and it says that my leftover amount will be negative, in which case I will not be able to do the transaction. So let's say it is 100 shares. Uh, do I want to receive an SMS? Yes or no. I need to enter my password. Important, this is the same password that you enter for logging into the website. You hit the trade button, and immediately it pops up a confirmation. Please confirm that you would like to buy. 100 standard bank shares, price 99.85, life of trade, good for month, 28 April 2020, click OK to place the trade or cancel to modify your entry. I will cancel. So that's how you're placing a trade and that's how you're finding your various different shares uh, in the online share trading platform. Greg Krugs, uh, quotes bank balance, I see it charges you when you trade. Is there a monthly free trade or will this amount be debited monthly? Uh, great question, Greg, and let me get to that now. The short answer is there's my quotes bank up there. Uh, every time you, you trade, you're going to be charged because you saw a live price. That's how it works. The point is, is that Standard Bank is giving you money every month. Um, in terms of, of, of the scenario. So let's first run down. So if you go to a live price, you're going to pay 19 cents. Delays are free. Right? Absolutely delays are free. What happens is every time you do a trade, you get given five rand to your quotes bank. And every month, you get given 10 rand to your quotes bank. So if you're not trading, you've got 10 rand at 20 cents, uh, sorry, at 19 cents. Uh, my math is going to be bad. I'm going to say you can get 50. It's a little over 50 free quotes per day in, in terms of um, for your 10 rand. And then every time you do a trade, you get another uh, five rand of credit. So that money then comes uh, into your account at the same, uh, sorry, into your quotes bank at the same time. Um, what's important when you go to the quote page, what you will note is you're getting live here at the same time. And that's, again, that's going to cost me that 19 cents in the process. Now, I do sufficient trades and I don't stress it, but if you're watching that closely, then, uh, yeah, watch it closely. Uh, folks, any more questions coming through? A lot of folks asking if we are recording the webinar. The answer is yes. It has been recorded and it will be up on the YouTube channel and the online share trading platform uh, probably within the hour, assuming uh, the, 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 my internet is working, but it's working lovely, so it will be up nice and quick. Uh, question from David, month life of trade is a bit risky. If you only have a partial sale, uh, you will be charged broker less for the remainder. Yeah, so what Dave is saying, and, and you're correct, it applies to one day, but 30 more so. I said I want to buy 100 Standard Bank shares at 99.85 was my price. And the price moves down and someone sells me 10 shares. And that's all. So I've now bought 10 Standard Bank shares. That's cost me 1,000 Rand. But my transaction fees are probably going to be, what, 150 or so, including the taxes and the straight and the, all of that. So there is a risk that you get a partial full. And there's two ways we manage that. One is be very careful with low liquid shares. So with Standard Bank, if you know I want a modest 100 shares at 99.85, if the price gets there, truthfully, 
I will probably get traded in, in quantum. If I'm a big trader and I want a million Standard Bank shares at 9985, I might only get a part full. Um, so there certainly is some risk there. The other trick is make sure that what you say, when you do the trade, you say, email me on, sorry, SMS me when the trade happens. So if you only get sold 10 of the 100 shares you want, you can then log on to online share trading and have a look-see and say, well, you know what? Instead of 9985, if I pay 9995, I can get my other 90 shares. Cost me 10 cents a share, not a train smash at all. And what you then do is you would go into, into my account. You would go to order status. And you would click order status and there would be your share. So what that does for you is it's nice and simple. It says you can now cancel the order and resubmit at a slightly higher price. How the brokerage would work, and that's very important, is that all the buyers for Standard Bank in one day get bulked together. They don't have a minimum brokerage each. They take the day's purchases of a single share and bulk them up. So you can manage it that way. Uh, correct, Gary, you are remembering, of course, that it goes through. Now, there, there's the, 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 the quotes bank is taking off every time, but remember you're getting that, that, that monthly allocation coming in at the beginning of every month as well. Is a, is a trade, uh, Sean is asking, is a cancelled trade instantaneously, similarly as if it was done outside of trading hours? So the outside of trading hours, let's say you've got a trade in the market and you cancel it at 10 o'clock at night. When the traders come in the next morning ahead of the opening, they will delete all those different uh, uh, trades. If, however, you, tra you cancel a trade during market hours, the Standard Bank instruction will say, we will attempt. And what I mean by that is it is, I mean, it is measured in, it, it's, it's, you know, I don't want to say instant because instant is the speed of light. It is immensely quick. It is, you know, fractions of a second. But you might have traded before the cancellation order gets there. So cancelling an order during market hours invariably works, but there's always a risk that it doesn't. Uh, Wilfred, great question. Why does the brokerage fee seem lower when using a tax-free account? Because the brokerage fee in the tax-free account is lower. So normal equity trading, you're being charged 0.5%, whereas in a tax-free account, you've been charged 0.15%. So literally, you've been charged less than a third when you're buying in a tax-free account. And that's Standard Bank doing a, a special deal for, for tax-free. You also don't pay uh, security transfer tax which is another 0.25%. Um, so you, it is a lot cheaper to transact in a tax-free account within the limitations of what you can buy and how much money than it is to trade in a normal equity account. Folks, I'm going to park it there. We want to try and keep these including questions to around half an hour. As I said, the, the, the plan is to uh, be initially kicking off Mondays, Danaira and myself talking markets. Uh, Wednesdays, we'll be looking at the various different uh, 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 aspects of using the website, web trader, uh, st uh, auto share invest, Iris Viewpoint, etc. Fridays, ETFs, and then we will fill out the Tuesday and the Thursday. Uh, all will be recorded, all will get uploaded onto the YouTube channel. Uh, in essence, we're just helping folks, you know, moving into lockdown in what, uh, literally 36 hours time. There are going to be a lot of people at home. With a lot of time on their hands, we thought, let's help you with some of that time. Everyone, my name is Simon. Let us know what you're interested in. Securities at standardbank.co.za. Drop us a mail if there's particular things you want. Tweet us, uh, SPG underscore traders are. If you've got ideas of what you want to touch on, areas you want to focus on, uh, we'll chat again. Cheers all. Stay safe.